Hello and welcome to Ben Rosser's Conservatorium of Audio. I'm Ben Rosser and today we're going to be taking a look at using Native Instruments Absinthe 4 as a sampler. Absinthe 4 is quite an amazing synth, has many different features that can be combined in many different ways to be able to provide you some extremely complex and amazing tones and textures that you can sometimes have a bit of trouble coaxing from a more traditional synth. What we're going to look at today is how to use some of the features available in Absinthe 4 to allow us to use it as a sampler. So we'll see what sort of sounds and tones we can get out of this one as opposed to something more traditional. I rather like this technique simply because if I'm looking for a bit of a drum sound or a sampled sound that is completely different to something that you would normally come across, it can be a great way to be able to provide it for you. So most of the stuff we're going to be doing today will be done in the patch view, as we can get to by clicking on the patch button there. And what we can see is we've got three different channels, each of these providing us with an oscillator, a filter and modulation, all feeding into a master section which provides us with a wave shaper, a master filter and also a master effect. So quite a bit of flexibility there in how it works. To get our samples loaded up into the oscillators, it's a matter of going to our oscillator mode and selecting sample, and then the button just below that will allow us to load up the samples that we're after. So something a bit solid in the low end, we might go for a bit of an electronic kick sample. So we'll have a bit of a listen to that one. So as we can see at the moment, just a little bit quiet, so we'll just turn that one up a bit. Just making sure that we're not clipping the output meters of Absinthe there. Just going back to our patch view. We'll find something else to add to that one, so we'll just turn on our second oscillator, again selecting the sample mode for this one, and we'll just quickly use Ableton's browser to be able to hear the different sounds before we put them in there. So we want something that's sitting in slightly different frequencies than the first sample, might even use that one, so we'll just load that one up. We'll see how those two sound together. As you can see the second one adding that extra bit of solidity to the mid to high frequencies. And finally we're going to use something a bit more analog for our third sample just to help add something a bit different. So again we'll just have a quick listen in the live browser and see what we've got available. So we might go for this first one. So again we'll just load that one up. By using the little bars down the bottom of each section allows us to adjust how loud each particular oscillator is. And what we can also do is just turn these two down so that we can add a bit of filtering to the first one to beef up its sound a little bit. I'm going to use a low pass two pole filter for this one just to keep our low frequencies for us. Just bringing the frequency down and adding a bit of resonance just to help bring out the 220 Hz of the sound. 
and we're also going to use a bit of filtering on our second one. I'm going to go for a bit of a bandpass filter for this one. We'll just turn the first one down and bring the second one up so we can hear that one. As we can see when we bring that first one in we're already getting something that's just a bit different than your typical sound. And we might actually not add any filtering at all to the third sample just to add that a bit of normal acoustic sort of sound on top of the electronic thumpiness that we've got already. So again we'll just bring the volume of that one up. So as you can see when we combine all three of those and the filtering on the first two, this is what we end up with. So a bit of an interesting texture, a bit different than what we normally get. We'll add a bit of wave shaping to this, get a bit of grittiness and maybe a bit of distortion added to the sound. And as you can see by choosing between the different wave shaping waveforms, you can get all sorts of different sounds happening. Depending if you're after something a bit dirtier or something a little bit cleaner, such as our sine wave, which still gives us that nice solid sound, but without becoming too gritty. We might see what we can do as far as effects with this one as well. So we're just going to go to our effect view, just click on the effect button there, and we can adjust what our main effect is. So as you can see, there's a bit of variety in there. We might stick with the echoes as we're getting something interesting from that one. With this one, we've got typical wet and dry controls and input controls and various other controls to enable us to modify the exact sound of the effect. For example, we could choose to add an additional bit of the third channel in there, the acoustic channel if we wanted to. And we could also make use of the high pass and low pass filters as well if we wanted to. Just to really thin out the, the echoed sound. So if we want to hear how that one's likely to sound in the context of a beat, we can just quickly add a MIDI clip in there and we'll chuck some notes in and see what sort of sound we can come up with. So as you can see, 
fairly simple to come up with a fairly complex, interesting sort of drum sound. So take your own copy of Absinthe 4 and have a bit of a play with it. Throw your sample library at it and see what sort of cool sounds you can come up with. And I hope to see you again in another Ben Ross's Conservatorium of Audio tutorial.